there are two kinds of what I call dual mining. Uh, another case will be Latour, because Latour, as I said, is the wonderful philosopher of relational networks where a thing is nothing more than its effects. When you move a thing to a different point in a network, you have to explain why it's the same thing as the thing five minutes ago at a different place in the network. You can't assume that I now and I 10 years ago am the same person in, in actor network theory. You have to show that there's an equivalence. Um, so that's, a, that's a very much an overmining philosophy, that a thing is totally determined by its, its effects on the environment. But then Latour starts to realize in the last 10 years or so that you can't really explain change this way. And I mentioned it was Aristotle who discovered this. Aristotle was arguing against the Megarians, who were among his rivals at the time. The Megarians said no one is a house builder unless they're building a house right now. If you're not building a house right now, you're not a house builder. You only are what you actually are. There's an obvious problem with this, which is let's say a master house builder is asleep and someone else is awake who doesn't know anything about building houses. You're not going to say that they're on the same level, right? You're going to say that the sleeping master house builder is a potential house builder in a much stronger sense than this person who doesn't know anything about it, who happens to be awake and standing near the house. So Aristotle saw there had to be something called potentiality that is withdrawn from the current state of things. I wouldn't call it potentiality, but that's a, that's a side issue. Um, Latour starts to realize that you need this too, that you need a reservoir in the things. Um, he even calls it virtuality sometimes. It's in the things that's not fully actualized here and now. But then it gets a little weird. He calls this the plasma. And uh, he, he blames the plasma for all changes that happen, pretty much. He says, why did the Soviet Union collapse overnight with no one expecting it? The plasma. The plasma was this unthematized reservoir of potentiality or of virtuality beneath the Soviet Union that we saw. Even if, even if the Soviet Union had been working perfectly, this plasma could have ruptured it suddenly. Okay, why do love affairs and friendships break up suddenly when no one expects it? The plasma. And my favorites, why does the most mediocre academic musician suddenly write a brilliant symphony? I don't know if it happened ever, but the plasma. And he says that all the networks between things are the size of the London undergrounds. The plasma is the size of London as a whole. But it's just the Aperon again. It's this giant indeterminate lump. There are two problems with it. One of them is that all situations would seem to be equally fragile and non-fragile. If the plasma can randomly rupture things, then the most stable relationship could be destroyed by the plasma just as much as the most fragile relationship which is counterintuitive. The other thing is that the plasma is inarticulate. It's the same plasma that's destroying the Soviet Union and causing the, the composition of a brilliant symphony, which also seems counterintuitive. The same underground inarticulate reservoir that wells up and changes things. Um, Garcia, this 